Welcome to the Kumble Corner. I am Super Joshi, joined by Karan Mehta, and I am in some kind of corner. It was the big man's birthday uh, last week, so happy birthday, Jumbo Jumbo. Um, thank you for checking out this podcast. If you haven't already, hit subscribe below if you're on the YouTube, or hit follow or whatever it's called on the app that you are watching, listening this to on. You know what I'm trying to say. My English has gone out the window. But you know what? If you have another window open, Instagram, X, whatever, whatever, search for Kumble Corner, both with Ks, and follow us there as well. So you can kind of see more of our shenanigans, basically. Right, we're going to keep this episode quite breezy. Um basically in homage to India's first innings against New Zealand. I'm accidentally wearing a black cap. It was my sartorial choice has happened. And although it's, it's a test match, um, here we are. Right. While we are talking about black caps, should we talk about the white ferns quickly, Karen, before we delve into India, New Zealand and a match that I don't think actually happened. But anyway, um, Women's World Cup. Yeah. Um, it wasn't necessarily the most exciting final. New Zealand put up mm-hmm. a sizable total. You thought South Africa were chasing it relatively smoothly. And then once one wicket fell, they steadied the ship, slowed down, wickets kept on falling. And they could never reach the required run rate after that sort of onslaught of wickets. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess congratulations to New Zealand. After robbing us of a World Test Championship, it's fair that they won. Their cricketing nation won a championship fairly. Um, okay. And getting robbed of the World Cup fluke charade farce that was the England winning the World Cup. Um, it was glad that New Zealand won one. Sucks for South Africa. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see an end in sight. It seems like this is about what they're going to do is always make it just close enough and then lose. Um, so to South African fans, I want to say it's going to get better, but I doubt it. So maybe find a new hobby. It's just well, they're, they're, I mean, they're pretty good at rugby. They've won like what two World Cups back to back or some madness like that. Even beating the Kiwis, or uh, well, not, they're not Kiwis. They're called the All Blacks in that. But um, hey, congratulations! Yeah, you, they got that. Do, do you, I don't even know if you if you if you acknowledge rugby as a sport. Uh, I know it exists, and I'll watch it if I'm abroad and there's nothing else to watch. Right. I have no idea what's going on. I know South Africa is good. I know Fiji is good. I know. England. Is this, an, is this another one where England always tries to bring it home and then they don't? Uh, yeah. Um, England are a good side, though, I would say. But do, they, second? do they bring it home? I haven't for a while. I yeah. can't remember. That's like, that's like the soccer team. It's a good team, in theory. No, I think England have had more success in rugby than, than, than in, in, in soccer, football. Well, uh, as an India cricket fan, I can't say much right now. Ooh, yeah, uh, but were you New Zealand, man. I, I New Zealand again. Yeah, well, again, it makes India's loss to New Zealand look a lot better. We lost the champions. What are they going to do? Um, yeah, cross codes. Yeah, yeah so even in I think, even in two thousand seven, I think when India won the first T Twenty, I think I think India lost to New Zealand. If memory mm-hmm. says me correct. Yeah, um, it's just New Zealand. And, and what twenty nineteen World Cup? The World Test Championship. The rain. No, not just the not just the, the the Test Championship, but also the one day. When was that? Not oh, the one, the one that England fluked their way through? Yeah, where Jodhu scored like a, a great score in, in, a, in a losing effort and it was rain and it was a reserve day or some kind of weirdness. Yeah, neither 19 or 20, 21. Some kind of... The semi-final, I remember that, that sucked. Where you had to play across two days. Yeah, 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 exactly that. Yeah. It, they seem to get these, just the luck of the, the weather. They, you know, if there was a team, I mean, look, Jimmy Anderson is one of the all-time greats, um, and he would often get criticised or, or get this kind of term of Clouderson thrown at him because he needs a bit of cloud. I mean, overcast I he, merchant. Yeah, I think he was a bit more skillful than that. You can't be, um, you know, one of the leading ticket wicket takers in the game ever, and then not have a bit more about you. But New Zealand, I think, might just be a whole team of Cloudersons. Yeah, and they're all tall. The height. Is what killed us, I think. I think it initially began, I think we just misread the pitch, misread the conditions, had really no idea what to expect, and it showed with that first innings. Um, and then it it doesn't seem like we have the practice against that sort of height. It's just, Boomer's tall, but he's not O'Rourke tall. The same thing mm-hmm. happened with Kyle Jamison. Same thing happens with the freebie. Yeah. Same thing happens with 
Broad or um, the tall guy from South Africa that I can't recall right now. Skinny tall guy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the same issue. It just we're not prepared for that. We don't have the that sort of regimen in our in our history of practicing. And so the ball's bouncing, the sort of hitting off the cracks and just shooting in any which direction. Um, I think whoever batted first was likely to put up a low total. 46 is embarrassing. Um, yeah, there were some some stupid shots. They, if they'd made it out through, if they'd made it through another hour, then, then suddenly I think they would have been all right as the sun kind of came out. It was one of those things you knew that as soon as India got skittled out, the weather was going to turn. It was get sunny. It was just it was just obvious. It's, it's the England. It, it, it's what happens in England all the time. It was it was hilarious to think that we were thinking a five day monsoon. And it was rainy and overcast when India batted, and then day two was like sunny. Like it didn't mm. even seem like there was ever a doubt of weather. Um, and we bowled pretty well, all things considered. We we missed a mark. Again, this is all with the reading of the pitch conditions. We missed a mark by having three spinners and two pacers. Um, I think that's, that. Yeah, that's, I was going to say Siraj no. maybe isn't. He needs to maybe opposite operating a three rather than a two. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think he is that lethal. Like you'll get three overs of class from him, and then the last two overs of the spell will sort of drift apart. Um, so I think with the recipe of the team that we made and batting first, and just sort of reading the pitch that we did, we never had a chance. We were we were behind the eight ball from the jump. Um, yeah, I mean, I I had hoped that maybe India could win by forty six runs just for the hilarity of it, but. Um, I mean, let's be honest, if you score 46 in the first innings, no matter what you do, and also you let the number, whatever Saudi was, score That's 60, killer. 58, then you know, it's, it's, you, you kind of don't deserve to win, really. That, that well, they were 233 for seven, and then still sort of shot on an extra 80, 70, 90 runs or whatever it was. That that was in quick fashion. Yeah. Um, Rohit Sharma had a bit of a nightmare as a captain. Um, he obviously made that call at the beginning. He dropped a catch as well. Um, I mean, yeah, he got a 50-odd, but he he could have probably done a bit more. It, it just wasn't – It just, just he had one of those days, one of those games. Yeah, and I mean, the whole – it seemed like that. I mean, Virat got a pretty good ball in the first innings. Kale got a ripper mm -hmm. in both innings, uh, to their credit. Um, but it just always seemed to be uh, just, just off the mark. I mean, that one – that one catch that went to Kale in the slips and he was basically playing dodgeball with. It was something that I've never, like, it goes against what I would imagine is human instinct at that point. Like, even if I'm playing catch right now, if the ball's near me, my instinct is to put a hand towards it. Like, I'm probably not going to catch or whatever, but that's just what I'm accustomed to doing with the little cricket I do play. Kale just dodged it. It was never in Virat's side. It was never Virat's ball. It was inches away from Kale and he sort of dodged it. It just seemed that we were, I don't want to say complacent but there could probably be an inkling of that um that we were sort of expected to run through this series without any issue and it's very similar to the how england approached it before the ashes it just i think a lot of our focus has been on bgt and well look i mean all all cricket international cricket is really preparation for facing australia that's that's just the rules england made the rules we, like, we who we to argue with that this is fair cricket um <laughs> but yeah, so I, it's one of those matches, and and crazy enough, and this could just sound like a homer play, but I think leaving that match, we don't leave with the momentum given that we lost, but we left with a little bit of promise, I suppose, which after that 46, you thought, holy shit, we might get washed out of the series, the border of Oscar trophy will be a disaster, and our chance of qualifying for the World Test Championship, which looked basically assured a month ago, now a lot more things are in flux because we all as fans and everyone sort of just mentally assumed that we're going to maybe draw a match here, but the series wasn't going to really be an issue, let alone competitive. Um, yeah, so the thing with that is, um, look, India may still not qualify. India may qualify. Um, New Zealand were shocking in Sri Lanka. They turned it on. India maybe thought that New Zealand were like Bangladesh, but clearly New Zealand are not Bangladesh, and India might actually be, be a bit like Bangladesh. But the the ICT today, I've seen something that they're gonna they're proposing some changes. Um, not the ICT, the ICC. Um, 
Them about them. basically, <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, they're proposing that uh, there, there should be a minimum of three games in each series as part of the uh, World Test cycle. The next one, and I think, I think that's actually good because a team like India are essentially penalised for paying way more matches than everyone else um, because it's about win percentages, and if you've essentially the other teams have less opportunity to lose. Um, like a South Africa or whatever, they're playing two team, two matches at home against whoever, like say Sri Lanka, West Indies, wherever, they're going to have a higher chance of winning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and that's and because South, like even India have, have a not very have a pretty shocking record in South Africa, for example. So I mean, that's definitely something that that needs to be. Yeah, I think it's pretty England well. right now. I think England's played six more matches in the next Test playing country right there too. So I think <laughs> England's like fifth or sixth in the table. So yeah, it's I like the idea something. I really like the World Test Championship. I do think it adds some some sort of credibility to the bilateral series. Yeah. Um, which, like, now it's to the point where, like, the T20s and ODIs and bilaterals, if I'm up and it's on, I'm going to watch it. Uh, but, like, I remember growing up, the bilateral series were, like, I needed them for more than I needed air. Like, we'd wake up and plan our entire day around an ODI against Sri Lanka. Uh, so the mm-hmm. World Test Championship now adds something that you can at least point to like oh this is where the series would go so i like the idea of three make it consistent make it routine make it less room for um england fans to bitch that india made it again yeah it would look it would be nice um for india to make and it. let's I get the did. fucking championship out of england though i can't i cannot have this game <laughs> it seemed i mean that's that's india kind of hamstrung by that a little bit um or not a little bit a lot because <laughs> Of, of the conditions are alien um, and they, they they do all this good work and they have performed home and away um, in the last two test cycles got to the got to the you know to the to the final having pretty much been the best I mean I think in both of the last two test cycles they've been Australia away so it's not like they're just home track bullies you know um, but well that is what it is fingers crossed they can win the next two um, Slight concern. The next pitch, the, the next match at Pune, the pitch is going to be a bit of a spinny one. I mean, that could bring in like New Zealand spinners into play, though. That's the concern always with that, isn't it? Yeah, but like, hey, duh. <laughs> the second we lost this match, <laughs> yeah. you knew they were going to dehydrate the shit that. Uh, do you see like Pakistan did the same thing? They like basically, I saw a hilarious tweet that they put their pitch in a tundor. They literally have like a black cape around the pitch and like heaters. Friends. And it's like a thousand degrees already as is. And they are really drying it out. So well, we were they- laughing about Muldan last week, weren't we? We said it's going to be like a day 10 pitch or something because they'd already played a game just yeah. to get it to wed. And, and, that, and it worked awesome. for them. And it worked out. Yeah. I mean, if I, actually, I don't even know if we play on this pitch again that we'd played that we would win. But um, yeah, it's going to be a spinny pitch. Obviously, this will bring everyone back into Cool Deep will be more relevant. Juddu will be. Relevant, who actually bowled pretty well. Um, Washington's in potentially in the team. He's in the squad for sure. But but Gil, Gil's back and Bunt are both are going to be ready to play. Yeah. So I think I mean I think Kale's probably the odd man out. But there yeah. he's just so good abroad. He's so good in Cena that like do you just let him get his reps in for Border Gavaskar? But then does that mean that we're sort of punting no, on the I would take him out, and I'd probably put in. Shooby dooby doo. Um but if it's gonna be like just a black pitch rank turner, then there is there is an argument that's to be heard for, to put in Washi. Yeah. Um I think maybe you send Kale to Australia to, to play some club matches. Um they uh, <laughs> I mean they're not gonna do that, but um I thought I'd mention it anyway. Uh surprise Khan keeps his place, I I'd ha- you'd have to say. I mean, that was a, a brilliant one fifty. It's a yeah. shame he got out bang on one fifty, but it was he he was he gave us hope. Stunning innings, that that veer out wicket. Uh, that like it shattered me. It was it's like five thirty in the morning. I've been sleeping on and off on the couch. Haven't made it to the bedroom. There's like I wake up. There's like an over left. So I was like, all right, let me go get some rest. I'm plugging my phone in. And I just hear like an uproar. I was like, there's no fucking chance. I go up there. They're doing the review. The slightest of tickles just the lightest thing his head drops my heart drops and at that point like obviously you're gonna hope that like all right let's just put on like 
another 150 or whatever on tomorrow, but you knew right then and there. And what a fucking collapse that was. We keep on talking about the 46 because obviously it's a jarring number, and the other one we scored like what was like 400, 380, whatever it was. But we were 303 for four Mm -hmm. or for three, and then 64 for seven. Like the bottom order was a fucking disaster. This rule, this match. Yeah, um, I mean, there were jokes when when uh, forty when the, the top five were down uh, in the first innings that uh, I think I saw people saying um, it's good that the Indian tail is out of the way so the real batters can come in, <laughs> uh, right? But that didn't work, and and yeah, I mean, yeah, I was real it didn't bad. work in the second innings either, really, unfortunately. And I don't know. Um, Whatever. No, no, I was just thinking. I was like, I don't know what you do to fix it, but I think that might have been a very pitch heavy result yeah maybe it changed because of well yes i mean it clearly was and plus the conditions it was just a bit the cloudiness and everything just did not help um gotham would be did say beforehand um i think we we discussed it last week um that he he'd like his uh his his team to be adaptable and if they need to bat out two days for a draw to be able to do that um so maybe this was a plan maybe this is a should we go with the moral victory angle that that Gotti was testing his players. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of alluded to it. I said we left a little more clutching. We let, when we went into day five, probably equally as nervous as New Zealand did. Or day four. Yeah, equally as mm. nervous as New Zealand did. Like, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, does he, does he want to say anything? I think he wants to, but um, hold on. Let me mute this. <laughs> the door's been closed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, super. Josh. Probably wants to say why cricket. I want dinosaurs. Is probably what the conversation is going to go. Yeah, and all that's actually probably more stimulating of a conversation than us talking about kale. Fuck. <laughs> um, let's go through the list. We will get back to kale in a minute, but um, his hair looks great. Yeah, well, this is Villanog, right? This is South Indian Villanog. Uh, whatever it is, his hair looks spectacular. So I'll give credit where credit's due. <laughs> Fair um, also, credit where credit's due. Punt got injured. That's karma. Karma giving credit where it's due because he he was on about faking an injury to his knee in the World Cup final, and then a match where we needed him and he could have run. And he's batting with a dodgy knee, gets out for ninety nine. If his knee's all right, he's getting a century. Um, oh, um, and yeah, I just remembered his six. Um, who's going to say? He gets injured in his knee, and that's karma. What can you say? Uh, One of those things. Yeah, that that just sucked. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a it's a long term injury. It does look. Uh, I think it's slightly more precautionary than I have him not field because that's, that's just a taxing position on your knee. But absolutely, it could potentially open up the door if he can't play for whatever reason. And I said he's fit, but if he gets wakes up with a niggle, could open the door for KL to keep. Nah, Jarrell, surely Jarrell. I love Drew. I love Drew, but I just knowing, I guess the such more of the management is different, but it just seems like a really easy scapegoat to give Kale another chance and be like, all right, you're also keeper. I uh, think Kale keeping in text tests as hard of things as well as as long as I think also Drew is probably a, a just as competent batsman, if not better. Um, he would be better keeper for sure. I mean, he was just as competent a batsman, and he's you know he's obviously done the business before, so. I would hope that that's not the case. That they have Kale, um, agree kind of keeping, and you and you know that I am biased towards Kale because he's the only one out of this team that I've actually met. Um, <laughs> so purely, purely for that reason. Fair enough. <laughs> um, what are we, we going to talk about next? I'm just going through the list here. Uh, so Punt's injured. Um, well, should, should we talk about Kale being not the real son of, of Bangalore or the real Gunnariga, and that's actually Rachin Ravindra. He performed brilliantly, got a century because he's the son of Bangalore. You know, he, took, he alluded to an interview. Uh, I think Simon Dool was kind of gave him a bit of a, a ribbing. He said, "Have yeah. you used up all the whole team's um, allocation?" He goes, "Yeah, pretty much. Like his dad was there, and pretty much the rest of the family were there. He, he's taken the whole team's <laughs> tickets." Uh, uh, that's great. Uh, good for him. Uh, he's easier. He's one of the easier guys to root for an opposing team. I think we said it even beforehand. Like, who do you want to see do well but not well enough? Uh, Rutchen. He played well. It was fun to watch. Uh, that's I like him. Uh, you're not gonna. I can't. I can't rant about him. Um, good player. Fun. Exciting. Uh, good for the future of Test cricket. Uh, so yeah. All in all, he deserved it. 
well earned, well played. Glad his family went out there. Hope he fucking shatters his leg in the next match. I mean, that's a bit harsh. Hope he just gets a couple of. Get King Pear, is what I'd say. Well, the one way to assure that is shattering his leg. I mean, no, but they wouldn't count as a King Pear because he wouldn't bat in the second innings. I mean, I Assuming, don't... I suppose. No, I'm, I'm saying he shatters his leg on the way to the national anthems. Oh, wow. Yeah. I personally, and I don't think Kumble Corner can condone wishing injury on a player. <laughs> person. But, but that, that's, that's a you thing, Karameta. If I shatter my leg, then so be it. That's how Indra Dev. Indra Dev, unless you slip, yeah, because of the rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's two different points, but yeah. Um, we'll come back to Ratchin because I, I want to I, I wanna say something about him. Um, Pant, I was going to mention, this is what I forgot about. Um, that six where he taunted, was it Southie out of the, the stadium? On 90. It was ridiculous. On <laughs> 92, the balls on him. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's a no, classic. Not into the stands, out of the stadium. Yeah. And it, 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 that's pure. That's one of the ones where you can close your eyes and you know exactly what happened. Like you heard the crack of the bat, you know that's Gonzo. Um, you knew it was high. It looked high straight away, right? Yeah. And you, and it, you knew it had distance on it. This is not getting caught. Yeah, I'm t- it was literally the noise alone. It's the same thing in baseball. When you hear a crack of the bat, you know, you can kind of tell when a home run is hit. Um, same thing there. But it's a classical punch shot that if he gets out there, we're like, what the fuck, dude? Just like bat it out to your sentry. But when he yeah. nuke and piss missiles it out of the ground, you're like, wow, that's badass. Never change who you are. Um, so it's one of those classic things that uh, 99 is brutal. I think it's like his eighth time already getting out in the 90s in test matches, which is just a ludicrous number. Maybe uh, he's he's trying to emulate Sachin Tendulkar, I don't know. He is. I, the thing is, he's got the potential to be the greatest test match wikiper batter of all time. Yeah. He's coming for Gil. Um, so, and, 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 and when you think about le- all-time legends, yeah, Gilly is one of the best ever. And to say that someone is, is, is um, coming for Gilly in his position and has the ability to do what, what Gilchrist could do, both with the bat and the keeping... Um, is is quite a statement, and and it doesn't even seem like her public. It, it seems like like a genuine kind of assessment. Yeah, and, and, and I think he's got the same sort of uh, role on the team. Where Gilly was a big uh, rallying guy, the team looked for him to get that energy and stuff like that. He's always on top of his toes in the match, and Rishabh does the same thing. I think people they really take his opinion into consideration on reviews. He tends to be vocal in the in the drinks breaks and stuff like that. Uh, I think he's. He's a really special character to have on this team. And I think once he gets like even more mature, which I think the, the car crash probably aged him a couple of years too. Uh, sure. It's, it's he's a, got a major dramatic event. Uh, he's got, I think he's got all the potential to become like an Indian folk hero when it's all said and done. Indeed. Right. We've got a few minutes to go. Um, let's just recap. You, you, you kind of touched on one of them. Um, a few reasons that India lost. I think one, Rohit was in, in, in Karnataka, didn't speak Kannada. That's a big thing at the moment. Hot potato, probably bad juju, maybe. Yeah, um, part. Yeah. The, the, the other thing, uh, Indra Dev hates the BBC. Lord Indra. Uh, not the BBC, the BCCI. Whoops. <laughs> maybe he hates BBC. The BCCI. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, yes, Indra Dev hating BCCI. Uh, it happened again. New Zealand, maybe just love New Zealand. Maybe that's why it's the weather is like that where it is over there. Um, and also maybe just the Indian cricket team getting that performance out of the way where they just where they just make a dirty, or like they just get out for a, a bad. A, I a mean, bad. We we got off for thirty six and didn't lose a test match after that in the tour. So there is Fingers something. Crossed. There is there is a little something there. Um, yeah, I mean this. It's one of the. It's like in football. You walk. I don't think you're going to learn a lot from this match. I don't think there's a lot of tape to go back and like, oh, what did we do wrong? This seems like a burn the tape, never watch it again, never happen, go on to the next match as a as basically a fresh slate. That's the only way I think they have to go about it. Yeah. Pilot under C'est la vie. Yep. Um, I was thinking, though, about Ratchin and also uh, Ajaz Patel and, and a few others. I mean, I think there's uh, another Rahman that's just been recalled into England. Um, certainly in the case yeah. of... Um, in the case of Ratchin and, and Ajaz, Jitan Patel and maybe Ishtori, they, they they walked so these guys could run. Um, I think there's another guy called Deepak something other, I can't remember his name, for New Zealand. Um, I, I was wondering, you know, maybe in like, it's not going to happen in 20 years, 
unlikely in 30 years, but about 50 years when India is, uh, by, by, you know, within the next few years, India will have improved a bit as, a, as a, an economy, as a standard of life and all the rest of it. And you may have more and more kind of immigrants there. I mean, there's, there's, there are already quite a few from Africa. There's a, because they, they go there to study, there's a, a rapper called Big Sami, he's Nigerian and raps, uh, he speaks fluent Hindi. But I think maybe in, in about 50 years time, you'll have white boys playing for India. It could happen. And I would love, because I, I, I heard rumours about Ratchin's name, that it's, it's a portmanteau of two people's names. I don't know who they are. I've heard rumors. <laughs> and I was thinking, like, who, who what, what would, I mean, it would be great if, like, someone decided, like, some random Aussies moved there. And I thought, you know what? We're going to name our kid. Who did we like? Manus Labaskakni, because that's how you pronounce it in the Afrikaans. And uh, I know, David Warner. Imagine, imagine a kid called Marvid, Marvid yeah. Matthews or something, playing for, for India. But also, imagine heritage. Also- how big a piece of how fucking annoying the parents are if those are their two favorite players. God bless. <laughs> I don't want that guy on my fucking team. To, to be fair to them, right? If they are living in, say, Hyderabad, um, then David would have, Warner would have a lot of love there because of uh, his TikTok dancing and his Sunrisers play. Yeah, probably Delhi too, maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I think, I, I mean, I guess, yeah. That's, that was, I didn't expect the conversation to get here at any point. Um, I could potentially see that. I guess it's sort of like how 80% of England's team isn't from England. Um, so I'm not sure if that's still the case. Yeah, I don't know, but it's fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's basically South Africa A and B. Um, so, yeah, that's, I could, I guess, potentially say, but there's just so many fucking Indians. There's just you have to be really, really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to be <laughs> spectacular to cut, be cut from that same cloth of like a Mumbai gully cricketer. Well, if you're Australian, I mean, I assume you're already quite good at cricket when you're born, and and then if you if you if you're Australian like heritage, shall we say, and then you you're, you you grow up playing gully cricket, I think you'll be a bit of a beast of a player. Potentially, yeah. Maybe that's something that we should look into. Yeah. Just watching uh, a little Australian kid. Yeah, I mean, it just seems... Get him out of Brisbane and get him into Bangalore. Social engineering um, is a slightly touchy topic, but yes, <laughs> we could probably do that. Could be like that. What's that, what's that million dollar arm, um, million dollar dream, that Indian baseball, American baseball? Yeah, thing million winning? dollar dream. That's the one, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, million Aussie dollar dream. I don't hate that at all. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, look, it was really di- either discuss this or discuss, go through the scorecard of, of India's first innings. So I think there's a reason we chose this option. Oh, six ducks in it? Oh, that's just egregious. Yes. Oh, talking of which, this is our episode six, I think. So, yeah. So we pull up Daniel Alexander. This is an homage to <laughs> India's 46 all out, which four plus six equal to 10. I was born on August 10th, which is an homage to the 36 all out. Fuck that guy. Yeah, I think that's fair play. Shout out, Daniel. Um, no, fuck it. <laughs> Actually, take the shattered leg off of Rutchin. Give boat. Give Tim two. Again, I don't contend this, but open invite to be on the pod and debate, old bitch. This is you going into two pack hit him up mode. Yeah. Um, this is this is basically what's happening Again, right now. Literally an open invite to get him on the pod. Let's tag him on this tweet. <laughs> I'll tag him. Let's ask our uh, our production team to sort that out. <laughs> right, look, Karen. Let's leave it there. There's another test match that starts on Friday. Um, and we'll we'll see what happens with that. Basically, Friday. It is this Friday, right? I would start it. Was the next Friday? Tomorrow? Yeah. Start oh, no, to- yes. Starts start tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. So, oh, it's the next one that starts on Friday. Yeah. Um, the one that starts tomorrow is already going to have started by the time we're out. I think Kane Williamson's out. That's the, the yeah, really big thing. He's out. So it's just as well we didn't go too deep into a preview so because what, what are your squad changes? Just for the crack of it, get Washi in um, for Kale. Four spinners? Yeah, I don't know where. I mean, I'd like Gil to be in, but I just don't know how this all fits in. Exactly. So what's, where's the You want four spinners in there, or you take out Kuldeep or Jundu, or uh, you're probably not taking out Ash? <sighs> yeah, I think you maybe Kuldeep misses out. No, but, but then I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's I, can't, I can't make that call. You can't make that call. That's what we're doing for the podcast. It, it's, 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 um, it's way above my pay grade. Yeah. Well, right, you know what? <laughs> Do this. Uh, Jess, welcome, Bolson Spin. Um, so put Gill in. 
for Kale. Yeah, Gil for Kale. Oh. Keep, keep Jess well. Bolton's been right. Should be able to, she, she needs to start bowling a few hours as well. Virat, Virat. Um, Virat needs to do his medium pace. Um, he sh- he should st- they all need to bowl, basically. If you're not batting, if you're not scoring any runs, bowl a few hours. Well, Virat Simple. scored 70. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's the same change. Yeah, maybe if, you, if you've not scored a century in a, in a game, you have to bowl a certain amount of overs. That should be the rule. Yeah, I will say just a quick side note. This this last match really showed that Shami is an integral part of this team. We oh, can man, take care of like Bangladesh else. and stuff like that without him, but when we're playing like the big dogs, uh, Shami is so critical. And especially in these conditions, he would have been lights out. So, we really hope he's back soon. Really, really missed him. Right, uh, let's let's pray for him. He's, he's, he's bowling the nets again, so let's pray for his health. Um, let's leave it there. Yep. Kumbli Corner, uh, signing out. D- don't forget to tell your friends to like this, because otherwise, what kind of a friend are you if you're not sharing great, good quality cricket content with your pals? Uh, from Karan and myself, catch you next week. Follow us on the socials, Kumbli Corner, 2Ks. Bye for now. <laughs>